Greetings, Seekers, I'm Dr. Amir Fassad and I have been missing in action for far too long. We at one great big conspiracy abandoned the Occupy movement to go study Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb. While there, we discovered that tribes in the Sahel region were using human slavery to produce fake maple syrup made from the buobri of Burkina Faso. Now, a political coup in Mali has changed the equation of everything in North Africa, and Dr. Dawar is Salem is here to tell me about it. Thank you for being here, Dr. Salem. May I say hello to my peeps in Syria? Based on what is going on today, half the population may be killed before the weekend is through. Hi kids. I may be joining you soon. First things first, Dr. Salem. Explain to me what has happened in Bamako since March. The coup leaders seem to want the same thing as the president. Why overthrow the government? The young fools who dumped President Two Ramos understood the signals they were getting from the United States Africa Command. There are U.S. troops in Mali today, part of a joint planning assistance team, but Captain Snogo thought that if he took power, the United States should send the Green Beret soldiers to Mali, the ones who are currently chasing down Joseph Kani. It was a foolish, foolish error. Before I forget, who was responsible for the Joseph Kani video on YouTube that caused such a sensation? Al-Qaeda and the Islamic Mareb was responsible for the video, since the Invisible Children non-profit group is really a terrorist operation. But the CIA was responsible for the psychotic reaction from the movie's director in San Diego. It was a way for the agency to discredit Al-Qaeda, and at the same time test the power of the booberry syrup. Was Captain Sonogo responsible for the huge gains made by the Northern Rebels? Did he act as a sleeper agent for Al-Qaeda? Only indirectly. The Rebels already were at the gates of Timbuktu. They had chosen the name of their new nation, and were waiting for the chaos to increase in Bamako to announce the new nation of Azawad. What does Al-Qaeda hope to gain by having a nation of its own? I suppose Timbuktu could be considered a tourist destination, but northern Mali is more inhospitable than Yemen. Ah, this is where the trade in booberry syrup comes in, Dr. Fassad. There was a slavery network linking Mali, Mauritania, and Burkina Faso that already operated in the Sahel. But the narcotic booberry was seen as a lucrative and profitable way to replace the cut leaf that was the center of the Yemen economy. In fact, Al-Qaeda leaders believe that booberry syrup, properly promoted, could replace both crisp meth and medicinal marijuana in the United States, thus making American citizens targets for Islamic terror. Aha. Uh -huh. So this is where the strange syrup actions of early April are explained. Syrup is sent to neo-Nazi activists in California, and placed on waffles at the Waffle House in Georgia, thereby leading to a shooting for Facebook reasons. And of course, Facebook listing its stock on the New York Stock Exchange plays a role in all this. Mark Zuckerberg has always been a deep cover agent of Al-Qaeda. And the CIA, I might add. So why did you invite one great big conspiracy to this Bamako emergency room, Dr. Salem? What is critical to understand about his award and Timbuktu? We are seeing victims of the booberry syrup go through distinct phases, Dr. Fassad. First, they go through a hypnotic, or catatonic, stage, and listen to music such as dubstep and Nicki Minaj. Then, they perk up in a highly suggestible state, and wish to follow devout characters like Rick Santorum. We believe that Al-Qaeda wants to reach patients in this second stage, and turn them into Salafist Muslims. If they gain access to pink slime and move to the third stage, they reject all authority, advocate political horizontalism, and rush out to join and occupy movements. The problem with this third phase is that people start believing and making decisions by consensus. Of course, no one wants that, not Al-Qaeda, not Captain Sonogo and the coup leaders in Mali, not the US President Obama, not the CIA, and certainly not Mark Zuckerberg. Then why for heaven's sake promote a buobri syrup market? Couldn't Al-Qaeda bring down the United States by better control of the slave labor surrounding chocolate and coffee? Not good enough for creating devout slaves, Dr. Fassad. Al-Qaeda leaders were worried that this would only increase American superficial jitters, and make stupid Kim Kardashian and Snooki movies a global phenomenon. They wanted to arrest booberry victims in phase 2, and turn the global population into zombie slaves of Islam, 
So the syrup deployment actions took place on Good Friday to send Americans a deliberate message that they soon would be bowing to Timbuktu. Precisely. We really don't think this Operation Crucify program will work at all, though it may leave sticky residue all over the American body politic. But we do worry that Timbuktu will become the next center of American Islamic struggle, and that armed drones will be deployed throughout North Africa. At that point, Israel may use the proliferation of drones in the Sahel, Sahara, and Syria sky space to launch an assault on Iran. Which seriously makes one wonder if Mossad was behind the bull breed trade to begin with. But of course, Dr. Fassad, Mossad is ultimately behind everything, everywhere, all the time. As is the CIA. You of all people should know that. Mossad and the CIA also were behind the continual cultivation of hotter and hotter chili peppers. The capsaicin in the peppers turns people into zombie slaves. Particularly in combination with blueberry syrup. Dr. Salem, we are out of time for today, as I must get back to the United States to awaken blueberry and chili pepper victims in time for the November elections. Any parting message for those watching? Syrup won't stop them, unless you can make it to phase 3. On the other hand, the absence of syrup won't stop them either. Tell the US Africa Command to stay the hell out of the Sahel. And stay far, far away from Timbuktu. Thanks, and we'll be watching North Africa as carefully as Augusta, Georgia. Bye bye.